One day, the girls encountered a robot on the academy grounds. According to Sophie, the robot had been here for about a week now. But Arnest hadn't noticed it until now. She became curious about who had brought the robot to the academy. Suddenly, the robot displayed a projection of Blade's image. Meanwhile, Ku Chulin arrived unexpectedly and disrupted Blade, who was currently training his fighting spirit techniques as if in meditation. Given the warning that unleashing more than 15% of his power would result in his death, Blade focused on honing his combat spirit to conserve energy. Shortly thereafter, the girls brought the robot they had found to Blade. As soon as Blade laid eyes on the robot, he unleashed the Dragon Eater without hesitation, causing the robot to shatter into pieces. Arnest was understandably furious at Blade for attacking the defenseless robot so abruptly. However, Blade regarded the robot as a threat. He explained that it was a guardian, a creature that would regenerate no matter how many times it was destroyed. While Blade and Arnest argued, they remained unaware that the robot was still functioning and analyzing Arnest's body. The next day, the previously shattered robot had miraculously repaired itself and now possessed a body resembling that of a woman. Suddenly, she approached Blade and inquired about her body. She had analyzed the thoughts of men and updated her appearance with a design that would make men want to protect her. Blade still did not realize that the girl in front of him was the guardian from the previous day. As the guardian attempted to attack, Blade quickly became aware and once again summoned the Dragon Eater, shattering the arena walls with each strike. Despite Arnest's scolding, Blade felt no pity, as he knew the guardian would surely regenerate. True enough, by evening, the Guardian was waiting in the arena. Arnest immediately stopped Blade from trying to destroy her once more, sensing no threatening aura from the Guardian. She believed the Guardian might just want to be friends. However, Blade remained skeptical and viewed the Guardian as dangerous, especially if she were to become a berserker. The Guardian then revealed that she had received orders to eliminate Blade. Suddenly, Claire invited the Guardian to study together. The Guardian refused, stating that cooperation was not within her programming. Claire remained steadfast, suggesting they simply learn how to cooperate. Claire even instantly referred to her as Ima. On the Guardian's clothing, there was an inscription 10NA, which was said to be an identification number and model, not a name. Since the Guardian lacked a name, Claire saw no issue with giving her one. The other friends were impressed by Claire's determination. Not only that, but Claire even proposed that they all brainstorm ways to defeat Blade. Eventually, Ainuna agreed to Claire's suggestion. Currently, they are in the classroom to discuss this matter, with Eliza also present. First and foremost, they want to understand why Iona wants to destroy Blade. She responds that it's because Blade forcefully entered her domain and violated her multiple times. Blade immediately refutes Iona's seemingly ambiguous statement. In fact, Blade only entered the area guarded by Iona, and at the time, he had borrowed the master key from the headmaster. However, Iona insists that it's not enough. There are still biometric codes and biological signatures required. Arnest is puzzled about the location they're referring to. Blade then explains that underground, around here, there's a royal library that stores forbidden books. He had sought information about Asmodeus there. Arnest feels embarrassed upon hearing this. Blade did all of this to save himself. However, Ainuna claims that Blade had infiltrated 13 times before that. Then Ainuna had been destroyed 28 times. Her body was shattered into 577,526 pieces. Subsequently, reprimands from superiors arrived within 500 million, 37,000 milliseconds. Blade defends himself by saying that Iona attacked first. His friends, however, remain impartial, and eventually, Blade sulks and leaves. Sophie chases after Blade, who is walking away in a sulk. Blade is not pleased to be called a library intruder when he was only doing his duty as a hero. Sophie understands this. Furthermore, the Guardian's soul resides elsewhere, so no matter how many times she's destroyed, it doesn't bother her. Sophie then asks what if the Guardian truly dies when she's destroyed. Of course, Blade would be concerned. Meanwhile, Eliza is explaining why Iona can't win against Blade. In essence, Blade shows no mercy to Iona because he knows she won't die no matter how many times she's destroyed, so they must first think of a way to make her unbeatable. 
Iona has already considered this, which involves transforming her body into that of a woman. From their observations, Blade is reluctant to harm women. Eliza thinks of a strategy, naming it the Standalone Complex. Simply put, Iona needs to install the soul in her main unit into her current unit. This way, she becomes vulnerable to destruction. In that state, Blade should hesitate to destroy her again. The next day they immediately held a duel in the arena, watched by many students. As planned, before the duel began, Iona informed everyone that she was currently in standalone mode. This meant her body was directly connected to her main unit, allowing her to move freely. If she were destroyed now, she wouldn't be able to regenerate. Iona suddenly directed Blade's hand to her chest to show that her vulnerability was located there. Ten centimeters inside, her soul resided. If seriously injured, her personality would disappear forever. Afterward, Iona initiated their fight. Blade had been receiving attacks all along and hadn't counterattacked. When Blade endured a particularly painful blow, he wanted to retaliate with the Dragon Eater. However, he recalled Iona's earlier statement. Blade immediately abandoned the Dragon Eater and only released air from both his hands. Unfortunately, the attack wasn't powerful enough to defeat Iona. In the end, Blade continued to be relentlessly attacked until he could no longer fight back. Blade couldn't counterattack because his offensive power was too strong. Also, Iona couldn't be defeated with just small attacks. Thus, Blade surrendered at Iona's request. The audience cheered as it was the first time Blade had lost in combat. Iona seemed fascinated by the cheers of others. Afterward, they all rested in the cafeteria. Iona appeared to have no appetite for food. Or perhaps she simply had no need to eat. However, Iona explained that she had the ability to absorb and break down organic matter into energy. So Arnest concluded that Iona indeed had no appetite. Claire suggested that Iona should just inform them if there were any problems on her mind. After all, Iona was their friend. Typically, decisions were made by the main unit in this situation. Once the task was completed, it was reported to the main unit for the next assignment. However, for some reason, the main unit had been continuously rejecting her. Despite her connection being restored, it seemed that due to Iona's actions, she was considered a defective unit and her registration was revoked. With no superior anymore, her condition became unstable. Iona then asked Blade to become her master. If Blade refused, her countdown would continue. After a guardian was disconnected from its main unit, there was a self-destruct program to prevent the unit from becoming a berserker. The entire cafeteria was shocked upon hearing this. There were 303,751 seconds, or 84 hours, remaining. With no other options, Blade decided to become Iona's master. As Blade relaxed in the school courtyard, Iona approached while wearing a maid outfit. Blade was puzzled by Iona's behavior. She said she would take off the outfit if Blade ordered her to, but Blade hesitated to do so. Iona interpreted this hesitation as an order to keep the outfit on. Suddenly, Sophie appeared with an annoyed expression, upset that Blade had given Iona an order but not her. Blade pleaded with them not to argue and create problems. In response, they both asked if it was an order. Later in the school hallway, Blade encountered Sophie again, who was wearing cat ear accessories. She mentioned that she might be able to surpass Iona by developing her character. Surprisingly, Iona had the same idea and was wearing rabbit ear accessories. They continued to compete to determine who deserved Blade's orders. Eventually, Iona said she believed they didn't need to compete anymore. Previously, Iona was always alone with Blade being the only one who approached her. Similarly, Sophie was always alone in the experimental room, but she felt a connection as a simulation of Blade. Thanks to Blade, Sophie felt connected to the world. They both saw each other as special, similar figures. Blade, pretending to be asleep, smiled as he listened to their conversation. The next day, Iona greeted Sophie, who was having lunch in the cafeteria. However, Blade became suspicious upon hearing a strange sound from Iona. He asked Iona to show her countdown, and it turned out her countdown was still running with 7,000 seconds remaining. However, the countdown was now 10 times slower than before. Iona expressed her desire to be with everyone until the last second. Following her request, the students threw a lively party for her. Strangely, Blade was absent during the celebration. 
Arnest and the others searched the entire school area, but couldn't find him. Now, Ayana had only 60 seconds left. In the arena, she created a barrier around herself to prevent others from being affected by the explosion. For the first time as she faced her imminent death, Ayana felt like she understood humans. With only 5 seconds left, Ayana suddenly confessed that she was actually scared. She didn't want to disappear. She wanted to be saved. As she was about to vanish, she asked the others not to forget her. Just as there was only one second left, nothing happened to Ayana's body. Suddenly, Blade emerged from the ground. When questioned by Arnest, Blade explained that he had gone to meet Iona's parent. He convinced them not to let Iona go. Blade also admitted to using a bit of force. It turned out that his connection with Iona's parent had been restored. With this he had no reason to activate self-destruction. Iona immediately hugged Blade with tears of joy.